You might remember the sunfish from one previous video where I discussed how I wanted to make a, a really light beer that's an ale. I'm not lagering it. I'm not using a lager yeast. Uh, but I wanted it to have a light body, lots of flavor, but I wanted it to be something that was very refreshing and went down easy and uh, wasn't too heavy in terms of alcohol or body. I want the beer to be very light, but I don't want it to be too watery. And I also wanted to experiment with mosaic hops because I really like that hop and I wanted to see what it would do. So let me tell you the recipe and kind of the stats on it and how the process went. And then I'll get some beer out of the keg and, uh, and we'll go through my tasting notes. Uh, batch size was uh, five and a half gallons. Uh, boil size started at eight. The boil time was 70 minutes. Calculated IBUs are about uh, 27. The color is very light, you'll see it's four. Expected alcohol was 5.4. And when I go over the tasting notes, I'll tell you how that actually turned out. Uh, original gravity was uh, 1.050. Uh, final gravity was 1.010, 8 pounds of Pilsner, 2 pounds of cooked rice to lighten the body, and 1 pound of Belgian Munich, and then I mashed at 150 for 60 minutes, so that's a medium body mash. I used uh, one and a half ounces of Willamette hops for the boil, 60 minutes, and then I added one ounce of mosaic at flame out, and then I dry hopped with another ounce of mosaic for 8 days. Don't let that small amount fool you. By dry hopping at a low temperature and then cold crashing immediately after, I've really retained a very distinct aroma from the mosaic. Oh, and keep in mind too that since the body is pretty light, you're gonna notice the hops a lot more. So I don't want it to be too bitter because there's not a lot of body with it and it'll be completely out of balance. But I did want a very hoppy aroma, so one ounce at flame out, one ounce dry hop for eight days at a low temperature. Those are the stats. I'm gonna go fill this up. I'll be right back. Nice, huh? All right, let's go. Oh yeah. So it's got some nice bubbles. It's got a nice pure white head that is persistent. It's, uh, it's quite clear. Let me wipe off some of this condensation, see if you can see through there a little better. That's a, that's a very, it has settled out very nicely. That is just beautiful. The first thing I do is I put my nose on it and then I check it out, you know, I hold it up to the light and check it out because this mosaic hop, it's extracting the most volatile aromatic compounds out of that hop. If you want to get those most vivid aromas, do it right after you pour. It's a very vivid um, tropical, like a, it's, it's very vivid, but not really distinctively any specific fruit tropical, I don't think. My nose is not very well educated yet, so I have a hard time distinguishing what I'm smelling. I can easily say whether I like it or not, but Coconut, mango, grapefruit peel. I, I, that might sound like a strange combination, but let me tell you, it works. It smells great. More fruity and berry, tropical. Taste it. Man, this is fantastic. I love this beer. The very first thing that hits you is the high carbonation. I've got it heavily carbonated. It's very sparkly. It's got a tartness right off the start that comes from the carbonic acid in solution. It does have a light body, but it's not an extra light body. I'll tell you what, it's got about the same amount of body as a Paul Honor Municalis. It's got a very clear note of grapefruit and 
that goes well with the fairly moderate bitterness that we've got, 27 IBU. It's got a great mouthfeel, a long, gently bitter, grapefruity aftertaste that really lingers. And the finish is quite dry, which is as designed. I love the color of it. I like how it's got enough, enough body in it to lace on the glass. My wife loves this beer. All that money I spent on the equipment, I'm forgiven. Even if I didn't like this beer, I would like this beer. If the lady of the house is happy, awesome. I would love for you guys who know what you're doing better than I do to make this beer, improve it however you like, and then let me know how you did it so I can learn from you. I don't care if winter is coming on. I'm going to be drinking this all winter. This is, I love this. And it did come out at exactly 5.4% alcohol using USO5. Yesterday was uh, my oldest son's 21st birthday. I went to the mix and match store and I got him a 12 pack of all different kinds of beers, everything he thought he would like. So he gave me some categories he was interested in and I filled up in those categories. And so last night we had a beer tasting, took a bunch of notes, tasted some really good beers. To be perfectly honest, I can't remember if there was one last night that I liked better than this. When I go through my beer, you know, tasting notes, and then I total the score, sometimes I look at that and I'm like, there's no way I like that beer that much. And then conversely, there's times when I look at that low score and I think, whoa, that's crazy. I, I really enjoyed that beer a whole lot more than, than what this amounts to. So I don't get a result that matches my overall impression. Okay, so speaking of tasting notes, here's my tasting notes on this. Uh, golden color, would you agree that's a golden color? I think that's a beautiful golden color. Pure white head, lots of bubbles, light fruity hops with a tropical note. Light body, medium grapefruit, medium light bitterness. Rapid, crisp finish with lingering fruity bitterness. No alcohol warmth. Mouthfeel is highly carbonated, tingling, and somewhat creamy with a bit of a lingering malty sweet stickiness, not much, but just enough to give you some mouthfeel during the aftertaste. It's warming up now, and those flowery hop flavors are coming out even more. Mmm, man, that's... You know, it just hit me. I had read and heard about letting the beer warm up to release some, you know, for it to open up. I like cold beer, and I just had never really experienced that. Maybe 50 or 60 degrees now. I'm gonna get the digital thermometer. I wanna know what the temperature is. Well, I am stunned. No way would I ever have thought that I would like the taste of a beer at 62 degrees. It just has opened up so much, so much character from the hops. The mouthfeel is more, um, it feels like it has more body now. It's a little less carbonated. I'm sure I like cold beer better. I mean, I just have to. But what I'm really excited about here is how much flavor this has opened up. I'm just winging it here, man. Uh, this whole thing about the temperature, I had no intention to discuss that. I had no idea that that was gonna come up. There's another upside to being okay with uh, a beer that's not ice cold. Um, not only do you get the benefits of a more open flavor, a, a broader profile of aroma and flavor, but I don't have to rush through my beer anymore, worried that it's gonna get too hot too fast. You know, I might never have noticed this if I hadn't made this beer and then studied it. It has opened up a whole world of factors. 
in the beer. Things you can do with it and flavors that you can get out of it. Tinkering with it and molding it into what you like best. As I started to analyze the flavors and it became more important to me to figure out what the flavors are that I'm tasting, that's how I came to appreciate the beer even though it's not ice cold because as it warms up a little bit, you can taste it better and identify these flavors that have been intriguing you up to that point. Go to the blog, jigheadbrewing.com. I'll have the recipe, I'll have the update, I'll have my discussion that you just saw today, and I'd really, really appreciate it. If anybody makes this out there, please let me know, and let me know how it turned out. Okay, I'll see you at Jighead Brewing.